this one here. I feel like I'm breaking into someone's house, Jack. G'day, Lynn. Hi, how are you? <laughs> We're here at Guilfoyle's Beekeeping Supplies. Hi. In Midland, yes, yep. Bellevue, yeah. Now, how long have has this been operating? Guilfoyles have been going for over 46 years. Um, they started in Queensland, they've come to Perth, they've also got a branch in Sydney as well. Yep. So we are around Australia. Oh, um, but John, John Guilfoyle started it, and obviously he's passed by now, but yeah. his son and his daughter run it, Jan and Ross Guilfoyle. So have you noticed more and more people getting interested in these? A lot more hobby people are coming into the industry. Flow Hive has helped as well. Because this is going to be Anthony's first harvest. Um, if they're going to come into the first harvest, you've got to make sure that um, when they're taking the fame out, the fame is at least 75% or more capped. Otherwise, there's too much um, flipping, uh, moisture in the honey. It makes it a very runny honey. Yep. Um, have your equipment all set up so that you're just going straight into doing it because if you take those frames away the bees are going to say hey hello you're taking my food so have it so that you're set up away from your hive don't over extract don't take too many frames out this is their food supply they still need that we're, we're just a bonus for them in other words it can be very messy <laughs> and very sticky and the bees aren't going to like you bees are like any animal and um, they can sense if you're stressed or things they will approach you um, don't wear heavy perfumes, deodorants. Um, best to do it straight after maybe a shower or something so that you've not got any heavy perfume on you. Because um, once one bee stings you, they'll leave the pheromones on that sting and then the rest will come. Be natural and don't wear black. Don't do it in extreme heat. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time and your advice. It's going to be very, very useful. Oh, good luck. Ant had his interaction with a bit of livestock the other week and there's some other livestock that we've kind of been neglecting and it's going to be a bit of work for him. We're about to handle a, a small herd I mean, we've got our cows over there on the lawn but we're going to be dealing with somewhere around 40,000 heifers today. 40,000 what? So I'm going to need you to put that on. Jack, Jack, this looks incredibly, are we, are we doing fencing? No. I really hope it's got nothing to do with bees. <laughs> oh shit. You're not allergic, are you? I'm oh, <laughs> not at the minute, Jack, no. <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was a cattle station, not a bee farm. We've got the bees to help pollinate the garden. I'll just let you know that my brother, was attacked by a swarm of bees once and wound up in hospital. Um, so, if the same happens to me, I can uh, I can always phone phone a friend. We've got our smoker. Okay. What we need to do is get some nice bits of wood, and we'll just get a nice, gentle, cool smoke. Is that where they're living, Jack? Yeah, they're in that one there. Which one? Okay. The three. Three story uh, townhouse. Yeah. So down the bottom you've got a brood box. That's where the queen makes the babies. Okay. And then we've got the two food, which are called supers, okay. on top. Which one are we opening? Uh, we're opening the top. Yeah. And we'll probably do a bit of a service on the middle one. We just don't want to go too close to the queen, right? Smoke. That's okay. our multi tool. So once I open this, what am I going to do? All right, that lid. Yes. You're going to place gently over on top of that one, so I can you hold the brush this. for you. Okay. So I'm just going to move slowly and calmly, deliberately. Calmly, deliberately. Is there a buckle on the other side? Or yes. Not? There is. So I'm going to undo those two buckles and place it over here. Yep. Okay. I feel like I'm breaking into someone's house. Yet. Well, you are. I'm coming in boys and girls, sorry, girls. Well, mainly girls. So the hive is, you know, the colony is made up of the queen. Yes. All the worker bees are females. And then you've got a few males which are called drones. Okay. Now, drones are kind of funny because funny they ha -ha do- Funny ha-ha or funny, like funny dangerous? Well, no ha-ha. 
They can't okay. sting you. Okay. Um, they sit around and do nothing all day and expect food. And their job is just to go out and mate with another queen. Gee whiz, there'd be a few comments on that online, I would think, about the females doing all the work and the drone bees sitting around. Well, if they don't do enough, they get pushed out of the colony. Well, that's... So that, been, that, that's been uh, many, many people's <laughs> experience, Jack. <laughs> Not unlike humans, really. Um, okay, I'm still doing this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's very waxy. It's kind of gooey and gluggy, and now I'm lifting this off. So, oh, oh, my word, look at that. Okay. We've got some honey. Quite a few bees in here, Jack. Now, just so you know, girls, it's Jack that asked me to come here. I didn't, I would have left you alone. I just want you to know that. Okay, here it comes, Jack. Now, how heavy is that? That is heavy, mate. That is full of honey. So we've we've foregone the the zapper, uh, not the zapper. We've foregone the the smoker, and you can see we've got our girls on there, and behind us we've got Ant with the leaf blower, and we just gently encourage them off, and then they duck straight back to their home. All right, so we're just gonna take this one back over to the honey lay down and spin them out. My first bee harvest, Jack. <laughs> My honey, honey harvest. We've uncapped our honey on either side of this. We've got them in the extractor there. We've got the handle on there. And got our lid on. And let's see how you go with that. Yeah. Okay, at what speed do we want to be doing this, Jack? As fast as we can go? As fast as you can go. Looks like it might take us a little bit more of that. <laughs> you can certainly smell the honey. Yeah. Don't they get dizzy, those bees? There is another way to do this. Yes. But it might involve a little bit of outback engineering. Oh yeah, with the drill? Yeah, yeah I like that idea, Jack. Did they get a demonstration of the hand crank? Yeah, we did have the hand crank, I okay. think. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can always break it out again, so. No, let's not. <laughs> That's not. We, Let's go with your idea. We've we got a few bits here. We've got the Milwaukee drill, and we've now made up our little driver for it. So we might turn this around a little bit. We worked out that it moves a lot when we spin it. So we look a little ungainly, but <laughs> we do <laughs> what we do to get the honey. <laughs> Making this up as we go along, Jack. Now, if I jumped off this, this would go flinging across the uh, across the workshop floor. Yeah. yeah. Please don't. I think <laughs> I think this part's more dangerous <laughs> than going to the hive. All right, Ant. Yes. We're ready to uh, pour a little bit of honey out here? I think we are, yes. Okay, you want me to just dump straight into that? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get it into. Good, All right, we'll put this back on so we don't lose that. Don't drop it in the honey, bro. What do you, oh, oh yeah, that's not part of this, okay. And this one goes on where? This should be the top. Honey everywhere. <laughs> Honey everywhere. All right, well, cheers, Ant. Cheers. Now, Ant, I reckon we've been pretty successful. We've got three big jars full of honey. We've made a modification to our extractor to make it a little more efficient. 
Our bees seem to be pretty happy and healthy. The garden's going well. And, um, and we didn't wind up in hospital. Yes, we didn't need to break out any EpiPens. No, that's, I think if you would have started with that, <laughs> it would have been better. Yeah, no hospital trips, but they make for good TV. They <laughs> do. After today's expedition with bees at the start, you were a little bit apprehensive. But... Yeah, I, like I, I've never had anything to do with bees. Um, except, you know, as I mentioned there, my brother, he wound up in hospital, so. That's my only understanding of bees, but no, I found it incredibly interesting, incredibly interesting. It's funny because when I, when I was coming up here and you said get supplies of what you needed, when I was coming through Kalgoorlie, I thought, okay, make sure you get honey. So I've got about, you know, three, three bottles of honey or jars of honey in there. And now, <laughs> to my surprise, of course, you make your own honey here, so I won't have to buy any more honey. Well, I wasn't going to tell you not to buy honey because it would have ruined the Small surprise. Enough. You told me not to buy eggs. <laughs> yes. And that I got because you got chooks up there and they they are happily knocking out plenty of eggs. So, but yeah, the bees. I didn't realise you you were um, what do you say? Cultivating bees? No. Apiarist. As as opposed to a pianist. Well, yeah, I've got no talent for music. <laughs> But an apiary, because a, a bee farm, for want of a better word, is called an apiary. Okay, okay, there you go. So. Jack, I, I'm gonna hang around you, I learn something every day, mate. I'm gonna hang around you more often. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see what other insect adventures we can have. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky the uh, I get go on the um, cardboard. Yeah, that's good. That's well done. And the B roll. <laughs> <laughs>